Happiness for us was a complicated. <laughs> this is a love story with a story by credit uh, to your wife and mother in law. Uh, did this idea come from a what if conversation? It starts when I was in high school and when my senior year of high school, my mom passed away and then my brother passed away my freshman year of college, sort of in short succession. And um, sort of suddenly, and I was 17, 18, 19 at the time. And, and that's the face or the foundation of really all of my work and my interest in being an artist in a lot of ways, um, because it informed, it was awful. You don't get over it, all that stuff. So that's that's the prologue to answer your question. Now, fast forward, and I'm married, and um, Rebecca's mother, uh, my mother-in-law, Marianne, she knows I make films, and she's like, "Hey, you know, I wrote a. I'm a writer. She is a writer, and she's like, I wrote this short story uh, about this guy whose wife passes away, and they he she tries to break into a museum. He tries to break into a museum to scatter her ashes." very simple but I connected with it because of the prologue that I just provided for you because I was like wow this I was newly married and in love and thinking about that through this lens and then dealing with my own stuff and so that's really the basis for for monuments in a lot of ways although I would also add in action adventure comedy and a lot of film stuff in there which I'm sure you're going to ask about um, <laughs> your use of transitions has a lively old-fashioned quality to them the circle, the wipe, et cetera. By using these simple film methods, what are you trying to communicate about your story? Obviously we shot this on digital for lots of reasons. Um, right. We could have shot it on film. I mean, it was definitely a conversation we had, but on a low budget indie, like it just isn't cost effective. Um, so, but I like that approach. And I think that transitions, you know, a lot of people say like you're, you know, as a director, if you got a great script and once you cast, it's really just like, how do you transition from scene to scene to scene? I mean, a lot of that is a lot of what we do in the edit when we're creating a film is, is that flow conversation. A lot of the, what takes time in the edit is certainly like sh shaping the scenes, but it's like, how do they talk to each other within the greater piece? And so from the beginning, you know, this film borrows a lot from films of the 60s and 70s, American cinema from the 60s and early 70s, really before 1975, 76, when we changed into this version of American cinema from 76 to now maybe. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's part of that. And then, you know, the opening is a straight homage to uh, Yojimbo from, as opposed to him walking in from the frame to majestically us looking up at him and he turns around and he does the little arm thing. Our guy pops in a frame and runs away like a loser. But Kurosawa used wipes <laughs> constantly. And like, yeah. then, you know, if you follow that along, Lucas stole, quote unquote, used also wipes in the Star Wars movies as a thing from Kurosawa. So when you watch these older films and you watch before they were sort of co-opted by Star Wars, like the, the wipe is an incredibly powerful transitionary element. I mean, straight cutting is great. Love straight cutting. Obviously, you don't want to wipe from every single shot to every single <laughs> shot. But it has a lot of power and to direct the eye, to help with flow. And so I think it's a couple of things going on. They're genuinely feeling like this, the, the way in which we do transitions in the film help with the storytelling. And then also there is a sort of, we are making a movie, Stephanie, Matt and I, who are like the chief creative collaborators in the film, are making a movie from 1969 or 1971 in our minds. Well, I caught that immediately, that's so funny. There are two stories, the love story between Ted and Laura and the road picture of Ted endeavoring to arrive somewhere, which includes Laura's comical family. In this contrast, what did you want to echo about the emotion involving love and remembrance? In college, freshman year, this is taking me back, and my brother was dying. He died at 25 of cancer, very rare cancer. Yeah. And it happened like in a uh, year or 16 months. And while that was happening, I was actually taking like a, it was probably like philosophy for, for filmmakers class and sort of bullshit, whatever class. It was actually a very good class. And I was taking that class and they're asking all these big questions. And I asked my brother about the stuff and he basically said, and this is the person who's staring down and he knew before I knew when he passed away, I was totally, completely in denial. Oh. And so when it happened, I we couldn't even imagine what, you know? 
But he said, you know, and this is now that I'm old, significantly older, it, it might feel trite, but it hit me back then, which is that this, uh, this concept that it's not about the journey, not about the destination, it's about the journey. And, and I think for someone who is at 24, 25, facing down their own death to be able to say that is incredible. Um, even for someone to say that in late in life is an incredible sort of uh, self-actualization that I've not arrived at. So I think the simple answer, a lot of the times we want a lot of things to be linear, I guess, but in terms of this film, you want it to be linear and you want there to be a moment of arrival where you're like, I've overcome this or this is all better. And I think that is not, in my experience in dealing with grief, there is no destination there. And actually that would be also true in relationships. It's like, we are all just where we are at in time, bumping into each other. And I'm coming in with my own baggage, you're coming in with yours and we will bounce off of each other. And I think what it's about is just trying to be present in the moment. If there's anything there, that's about that. There is a plot point thing that happens in this movie where we see them go from A to B to C to D. And in the end, he will do something. I don't want to ruin it for people who haven't read it. And like, he will, he will do that, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's all, it's all good. One of the highlights of the film is the dance in the bar to a Spike Jones song. You use the freeze frame quite effectively there, giving the scene a 1960s groove quality. How did that come together from idea to conception? So, you know, this film's, again, really personal, as you probably already can tell. And I remember my dad, who was significantly older than me. He had me in his 50s. He was born in 1929. He oh, my since, God. Yeah, he has since passed. But he, Spike Jones was, like, a big, a big deal in, like, the 40s and 50s. And in my memory, and this might be wrong, but he, I think he said he saw him live once, which may be not be true. But we listened to Spike Jones all the time when I was a kid growing up. So that song specifically, I really love. And it embodies in a lot of ways, everything that's great that we're trying to do in this film where it starts off and you, it's this one thing and it's a, it's a known song that's it's basically a remix. It's an early version of a remix really because that was a song that was pre-recorded before he did that. And he did this whole crazy, and that was a lot of what Spike Jones did. It was like this crazy riff on it, you know? Yeah. And it's really wonderful. Um, so the way it came together was this idea and in the, the sentiment of the song and like Ted is in this moment in the film where he's sort of dealing with his feelings about was he good or was he bad and how did he treat her and all that stuff but it does it in a way that I think we wanted to play with um I think when I was a little bit younger and in, in the earlier films I've made like close quarters and open tables to a certain extent I was like very focused on ideas and a rigid rigidity to um thinking that ideas translate over to an audience getting the idea and, uh, and applauding you for the idea. And I think that this is something that I still struggle with. And I think a lot of filmmakers actually struggle with. You get excited by ideas, but ideas don't necessarily translate to like audience experience. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Right. One of the exercises in this film, and this is gonna be really obvious when I finish the sentence here, was to try to break down any rule set really. You know, that's why this movie is, you said a melange on text, and I think that's a decent word to throw in there. Um, but the idea was that like, if it emotionally works or if it emotionally tracks, I think, it, I think it's functional. And so there were no necessarily, to the dance scene, it's more about energy and emotion and feeling. So the fact that we don't use, you know, an older, a younger version of me making this film would have really struggled with the freeze frames. Cause it's like, but we don't do freeze frames anywhere else. And I think that that's not the right way to make the film. This is Patrick McDonald for HollywoodChicago.com, copyright 2021.